Lafferty. Please get to your feet and mimic my motions as I share with you my sexagenarian perspective on exercise and the lifelong pursuit of happiness. So, first, as we stretch it out, you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. Let's first acknowledge the many benefits of exercise. It helps us physiologically and psychologically. It helps us avoid obesity. It improves our cardiovascular health. It triggers the release of those yummy endorphins. It facilitates the release of serotonin and then its uptake into the brain. It also helps regulate our sleep, although at Jefferson you don't know much about that. So, switch legs. And to boot. To boot. We all know we should exercise, and generally doing the right thing makes us feel better, does it not? So, but what, as we go up on our toes, what does a lifelong commitment to exercise look like? Nearly 100 years ago, when I was in high school and college, most public schools did not offer varsity sports options for women. And in fact, until the enactment of Title IX in 1972, even at my basketball crazy alma mater, UNC, not one varsity sports program was available for women, except cheerleading. So I cheered. But what did I do for exercise after college? Well, I went to Yale Law School, and while studying there, I joined the throngs of graduate and undergraduate students who relieved stress and sought to improve health at the wonderful Payne Whitney Gymnasium. First, you can do this, you have room, come on, you're not excused. <laughs> first, I alternated between swimming and running, but then I gravitated to the hardcore bodybuilding class for off-season athletes. The closest I ever got to Marine Boot Camp at Paris Island and my personal zenith of physical fitness. But then I joined the workforce of lawyers carrying these cases in Washington, D.C. I no longer could imbibe an hour-long group workouts at fancy gymnasiums. I had to experiment about how to incorporate exercise in my ongoing workaday life. First, I discovered the benefits of lap swimming at 6 a.m. in the morning at the Arlington High Schools. When I tired of the chlorine, I traded in my goggles for running shoes and tried the Arlington tracks. This, of course, was all BB. You'll find out later that means to be four babies. <laughs> then in 1980, with the arrival of my first child, not to mention my second and third, life grew so much more beautiful, but also exponentially more complicated. So, again, I experimented. I took up running, running during the day on the mall with my work colleagues. That worked well much of the year. It wasn't such a great idea in August or July at noon. Next, I decided better yet would be to, backward circles, would be to work out at home where I could be monitoring, talking with, supervising my darling children as they did their homework well or their playtime. Thus, the result, alas, we have today still in my living room, unsightly treadmill and elliptical, elliptical still dominate the scene. So, now, have I mentioned, by the way, the importance of risk-benefit assessment when it comes to choosing appropriate exercise? This is critical. Clicker. So, let me use, let me use, My darling daughter, Jackie, class of TJ, 2004, was a rel relatively sensible child. And, oh, we got to keep exercising. Okay. So, <laughs> while she was here at TJ, she generally made the Christmas assessments. She played, as you can see, tennis. She played, as you can see, played her mouth. Oh, she also... 
She went to Princeton, where she experimented playing rugby. Rugby was farming in this cute blood playing rugby. Rugby that has the wrist backers up, backers and forwards. A football. She was on her way, oh yeah, she was on her way to the All-American. And then, next, she made a spectacular play at Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and couldn't get up. Broke her neck. Oh. Major surgery required to fuse vertebrae four and five together. Here you see her neck brace, cleverly and stylishly, disguised by a scarf. But she lived on. But did she learn her lesson? Next. Apparently not. <laughs> this is Jackie skydiving in Switzerland. Happily, I only learned about this incident after the fact. Next. She also surfs in the Pacific. Traumatized by Jaws back in the 70s. I don't think these risks are as acceptable. Next. Okay, so. Here we are. Why is exercise so important? when you choose it appropriately. Circle, circle, circle. So, it is. Exercise is not religion. It is not love. But it enables us to do things to celebrate our life with our family, friends, and other people's circles. So, it enabled me, for example, to hike 212 miles along the Camino de Santiago across northern Spain, my darling daughter, not yet, not yet, with my, with my darling husband and daughter, next. It also, my husband and daughter, next. It also enabled me to bike, to raise money for AIDS research from Raleigh to Washington, and then to cheer my daughter as she biked across Massachusetts last year, also to raise funds for medical research, next. It also enabled me to hike with her 100 miles along the South Downs Way across southern England. Next, where when I pooped out, had no more gas in the tank, she carried both our backpacks. Next, so, <laughs> the future is yours to determine, but if you eschew making a god of your body, and don't obsess about your body, but nonetheless you exercise astutely, lifelong and sustainably, you too can celebrate your life all the better. Thank you.